What's going on YouTube? I had a great idea to do a upcycle. I found this shirt for about $20, but I'm getting ready to turn into a shacket. Yeah, you heard me. You know what a shacket is? It's a shirt, but a jacket. Long extended lines, and we are gonna get into that thing. Y'all ready? Well, let's go. Every single day, I'm gonna make something great. That's my way. Every single day, I'm gonna make something great. That's my, that's my way. All right, y'all, this is the extension portion of the shirt that I'm actually going to use. I could have made this shirt from scratch, but you know what? I figured for this project, we're gonna start with the basics. I tried this shirt on in the store and it fit really, really well. So why mess with perfection? We just gonna customize it for our purposes. All right, so one thing we're gonna do, we're gonna lay out our template shirt, this bad boy. And I got both of these shirts for 20 bucks a piece. I'll line it up with this pocket, because that's the length I want. But I'm gonna cut along the bottom of the template shirt. The red one. I'm using pinking shears to get through the thickness of the fabric, but also too, pinking shears control the fraying of certain knit. Also using my super scissors, my fabric shears. Keep those bad boys safe. Evergreen Art Supply on Amazon. I'm just gonna cut along the bottom of this. Okay. So I want this to lay flat. Right around that pocket. We're gonna reuse that piece for something else, you feel me? This is my pinky shears to go over the seams because they're thicker. I want to control that fray. Now that we're getting this to lay flat, I can be more precise with my cut. Just a little bit, but we'll make it work. Mark it with chalk very easily. Oh. 
boom. We can actually do another project with this bad boy. <laughs> we'll leave that for now. We'll work on that later. Hopefully. We'll do that. I copy it. We'll still record. I'll edit it now. But that is basically what our shack is going to look like an extended flannel. So, right now, what we're going to do is pin, pin and clip these two pieces of fabric together. I use binder clips most times, but I'm going to pin it now so I can get it precise. I'll binder clip the ends so that I get it to match up. And I can afford to be a little more liberal with the pins here, or should I say a little looser with the pins in the body, just because I won't be doing a whole, whole lot of movement there and it doesn't need to stay as tight. Pinning is such an arduous process, but I want to make sure it's neat. So we do what we do, we do what we must.
All right. And now that it's pinned, put it through the machine. One thing we'll need to do is install the walking foot on the machine. I'll walk you through how that needs to be done because this is going to allow the top and the bottom fabric to be fed through the machine at the same time and keep them even. Otherwise, one will kind of get ahead of the other. The feed dogs will walk it through. If you guys are not familiar with the walking foot, we're gonna install that as well on our Brother Project Runway Saw Machine. We're gonna lift up that presser foot, turn the machine off. Release the original presser foot that's on there. All right, we got it installed. This walking foot, baby, this is a game changer. Have you ever seen a walking foot in action? You wanna see it? I changed it. And the walking foot is the thing that said it do that thing where it steps it, like galloping, and it's on in there. Feed it through a stop. Feed it through a stop.
is in fact this way. Thank <laughs> you. 